Okay. Hello, good evening, everyone. Thank you very yeah. much for having me this evening. So uh, today we'll be talking about management of uh, ships in uh, heavy weather. As you are quite aware, uh, heavy weather have a severe consequence on uh, not only the ship structure or the equipment on the ship, but also on the personnel on the ship. So there are certain preparation that you have to make to avoid all these uh, consequences. And uh, this type of question is quite often uh, asked by oral examiners. How do you prepare a ship for uh, heavy uh, weather? So this lecture is going to be an interactive uh, lectures. So uh, if you have any uh, question, you can stop me as we go on, or you can simply wave your hand. I will be uh, very, very happy to stop and uh, clarify. So let's uh, start. Uh, how do you manage a ship in heavy weather? Or is there any of us that have been asked this type of question during an uh, oral examination? You know, what are the preparations that you have to make during a uh, heavy weather? You know, as you are aware, for you to know uh, that the heavy weather is approaching, the most important thing is for you to be able to know uh, the weather forecast of the day. So you have to check the weather forecast. The weather forecast is actually just a minute. I think the doctor is calling me. Hello, uh, just give me some time. I'm in a meeting. Okay, my sincere apologies. I've been ex waiting for my COVID test results. So, <laughs> yeah. so uh, before uh, you find out that you have heavy, uh, heavy weather approaching, so one of the means that you need to check is uh, using the uh, weather forecast. And weather forecast is always promulgated from SATC, Navtex warning, you know, Imasats, you know, sometimes uh, some ships have what we call charcoal where you have received weather uh, at hourly interval. So it's very, very important for the officer of the watch to check this weather because it might save lives, it might save the vessels. Especially when you are on a smaller ship, you should be able to know the consequence of uh, heavy rolling. So managing ships in heavy weather, it's very, very important. The first thing you need to know is about heavy weather preparation. So what are the preparations that we need to make uh, when we anticipate that uh, we are going to be uh, affected by heavy weather? And then it has to depend on the type of vessel you are. If you are on the container vessel, you need to check the lashings, the containers are adequately lashed. You need to check that all the equipment on deck are adequately uh, lashed. You need also to inform the entire ship staff that you are anticipating a heavy weather. Also very, very uh, important, you need to check the GM of the vessel. It's very important, you know, so you know uh, you should be able to have sufficient GM in the vessel. So if you are on a bulk carrier, you need to check that to ensure that all the whole space are properly uh, secured. You know that you will not anticipate any water that is going to wash on the deck to the cargo hole. This is to protect the cargo from damage. So if you are on ships like gas carriers, you have to inform people because some of those ships like the most ships, they roll heavily. So you have to inform all the crews to secure their equipment. You have to go around to check uh, that live rafts, you know, live boats are properly secured because there have been issues where all this equipment have been uh, lost due to heavy weather. So that is one part of heavy weather preparation, which we are going to discuss. The other one is the uh, heave to and running before. So this happens when you are in anchorage. And when you anticipate that uh, you have, have a heavy weather coming, 
you can heave your anchor and proceed. Just be monitoring the weather forecast and uh, run before the weather uh, actually hit you. You know, there are also dangers associated with heavy weather, you know, which can lead to hull damage of the ship, equipment damage. Uh, a lot of uh, ship's crew have been injured when they have been thrown away due to heavy weather, heavy rolling. Uh, a lot of ship staff has been washed overboard. You know, we have the issue of man overboard as a result of heavy weather. So it's very important for you to inform ship crew that nobody to go on deck, you know, unless you take permission from the bridge. It's very, very important. And also you are aware that heavy weather actually leads to uh, rough seas. <laughs> so uh, what are the general guide guidelines? The vessel have to be secured before sailing. So uh, oral examiners are fond of asking this question. How do you secure vessels for sea? So it's very, very important for you to check the conditions of the anchor. It ensures all, if you have uh, boat anchors at home, secured and lashed, which is very, very important. Very important to ensure anchor is home, secured and lashed. Very important for you also to check that all the other hold space within the ships are secured and uh, they are adequately closed because in some ships where you have to do what we call the manual sounding of ballast tanks if you are in port. So before sailing, you might forget to close it. So, and if you encounter heavy weather, you know the tank is going to float. And what happens when the tank is going to float? You are going to develop an angle of least to one side of the ship. And if you don't have a sufficient GM, that will result to an angle of uh, low. So it's uh, very, very uh, important. Another thing is when you are securing the vessel for sea, you have to ensure that all the cargo handling gears are properly stored and secured. You know, if you are in port, you might have reel out all the fire hoses so you have to secure all the fire hoses in the fire hoses box so that they will not be washed away. You know, some ports, before you arrive, you have to prepare the lifeboat ready for launching. Uh, you have to ensure that now, before you proceed to see the harbor pins are all in place, the lifeboat is uh, properly secured and uh, for sea, you know, is very, very important. More importantly, the powerhouse, which is galley, you need to inform the galley that you are expecting heavy weather so that they can store most of their equipment. You have, need to inform the crew so that they can secure their equipment. Uh, the ship crew should be aware so that nobody should go on deck, which might result to injury and also uh, fatality. It's very, very important for you to know uh, that. So weather reports, it's very, very important for you to check weather reports as I've discussed earlier. You know, these weather record reports have been promulgated using NAPTEC, SATC, EMASAT. So it's uh, very, very important for you to uh, monitor weather reports because it might help. Sometimes when you have an approaching uh, tropical revolving storm, especially if you are the Caribbean uh, area, you know, the Caribbean, the Latin American area from September, this is normally the hurricane season. So you have to constantly, uh, if you are sailing within those areas, you have to constantly uh, monitor the weather forecast. Not only the weather forecast, you have also some weather instrument on board. You need to check how fast is your barometer pressure dropping. You need to check the sea temperature. You need to check the wind direction. So it's very, very important for us to understand uh, this. So, Securing vessel before sailing. This duty is always delegated to head of department. And who is the head of department is the chief officer. However, you delegate these duties, but the primary responsibility of the vessels lies with the master. So another thing that you need to check is uh, before the departure port, you have to monitor the weather forecast. And if you anticipate heavy weather during pilotage, which might make it difficult or risky for the pilot to disembark or which might impair with the visibility because some ports will not allow you to sell if the visibility is below one knot. You have to delay departure from port, you know, for safety. 
Also, another thing is you have to also consider a uh, weather route. So most of these weather routines have been carried out by uh, companies like Jeppesen. You know, chart code, they tend to give you a weather routine of the best routes to follow to avoid rough weather. Another thing also is you can consider adjusting your speeds, you know, when you have a uh, heavy weather. So that is very, very uh, important. So I have a question for the house now before departure. So what sort of preparation do you make before departure? But I've mentioned few. So does anybody also have any sort of contribution to make? The floor is open. Anybody? Because the common questions for OOW, you know, there are some certain preparation you make before departure from port. Any idea? Captain Caleb, I, I also have, I want to add a question to that question. Is okay. why is it why is it important to secure the anchor? If um, I don't know if anybody, if the fact, if I would like to get an, a thought around it from the students. Why is it important to secure the anchor? Umar, let me let me let me recommend Umar to to answer this question. Since he has finished the exam, is either Umar or let Umar try first. Umar. Okay, so, so what is the question? <laughs> What's the question? So my okay, whole question I, is why is it why is it important to secure the anchor before you know before everywhere that when you're sailing and this Captain Caleb will ask this question again. I I think I I don't really know the exact answer, but I think it's because you don't want to lose your anchor in case of uh, bad rolling and pitching. Okay, answer Captain Caleb's question then. Okay. For his question, I, I believe his question was, um, what are the preparations you do before leaving the port? Exactly. What I know is that you must go on checklist. You must make sure you fill up your departure checklist first. So what are the content of the pre-departure checklist? Because you have to be careful. Uh, when you are answering such questions to an oral examiner, you don't have to mention checklist there because okay. from there he's going to ask you so many questions. If you check bridge procedure guide, there is nothing like checklist. You, know, you need to check the content of bridge procedure guide. There is a full section there. About, uh, okay, I believe another uh, another very serious aspect of departure from the port is uh, stowaway check. Very important. Yes. Yes. And and a lot of checks. Lot of um, okay. I can see there's one Anita raising her hand. Yeah, um, yes, Anita. Um, Anita, I'm gonna call you um as well, but I just want to chip here that Omar, I'm looking at your answers, but if it's not specific to the question, you might just be opening um you know more trouble for yourself. The, uh, the question is preparation for for every weather. Preparation for every weather, we are not dealing with, with stories here. There will be checklists, but what are the contents of the checklist? We need to also be more specific um, in that. It's not just a pre-departure um, checklist. I'm just trying to prepare your mind towards how the answer should be well um, structured towards answering the question. Hey, Anita, please go ahead. So I, I, I believe my question was about the departure not about the heavy weather no oh. it's about preparation for departure port due to heavy weather yes. you know if you en will encounter heavy weather there are certain preparation you will make in port um anita please go ahead Maybe there was a mistake from Anita. She okay. Hand. Yeah. So okay. let's go through it. Very important. Here you have to follow your SMS, which will talk about checklist. It's very, very important. 
in your safety management system, you will have is company specific. You will have a comprehensive section that have to do with uh, heavy weather preparation before port. You have to secure cargo, and this have to do. You have to secure it in accordance with the cargo security manual, which has a CSM. Very important. You have to also secure cargo equipment and lifting plant. Because your certificate of competency is not limited to LNG, supply board or tankers. So that's why I have to talk about most of these cargo equipment. They are associated with bulk carriers, container ships and other general cargo ships. Very, very important. So you also need to secure hatches and uh, doors, water tie doors, very important. You need to secure anchors. You need to check the seal pulling pipes, you know, you need to store gangways, very important. If you don't store your gangway properly and you are being hit by heavy weather, I remember uh, when I was uh, doing my, some training on one of the Chevron tankers where I joined in Los Angeles and on our way to China via Panama, we encountered a heavy weather which damaged the entire uh, accommodation ladder. And that have to result us in going to uh, dry dog for them to fix a new uh, accommodation ladder. That has a huge implication because uh, the ship has to be off hired for the number of days where I should be in, in uh, dry dock. The other thing is, uh, you know, the availability and reliability of the ship, you know, tend to reduce, which affects, you know, the total availability and reliability of the fleet. You know, the ship is not making money, they are losing revenue. So you can see the implications on not preparing for heavy weather. So it's very, very important. All doors have to be the water tight. You have to check them. Uh, we have loose gears off deck in Boson store. You have to check. Another thing that is very important is the sounding caps and sounding pipes because you know the OS, they are responsible for taking soundings and some of them will forget to put the sounding cap. Uh, DSO is uh, very, very, very important for you to understand that. Uh, the second one is you also need to check uh, the storerooms. It's very important for you to check the storeroom. You need to check the uh, pen lockers. In short, everything is uh, properly stored and uh, secured. The other one is about uh, freeing of uh, scoppers. When you have scoppers, uh, water is filled up. You need to open the scoppers, you know, to free up uh, the water is very, very important. Uh, last but not the least, which is very important. And this is, if you don't mention this in your oral examination, uh, I think you, uh, the examiner might not be happy. It all depends. It's about uh, stability. I've discussed about having adequate GM. And you also know the effect of free surface effect. So you have to reduce free surface effect. You know, when you have large surface, uh, free surface effect, it affects your GM. You know, it reduces the GM. So it's very important for you to reduce uh, free uh, surface effect. Very, very important. So those are the preparations that you make before, you know, approaching the heavy weather. So the next set of preparation is the preparation that you made at sea and uh, before the onset. So this one, I'm not going to, because of our time, we are still going to discuss another topic. I'll just go through it. You know, you need to compare and evaluate weather reports. You know, these weather reports, some of them have been sent every uh, three hours, six hours, while if you have uh, things like hurricane warning, you know, TRS warning, you know, they are being sent at, at regular intervals, some every one hour, every 30 minutes. You know, we discussed about SMS, same as previous. You need to inform all departments. You need to hold a meeting. Uh, we in the, in the LNG fleet, we call it, uh, you know, daily work plan meeting. You need to discuss it there. You have to sometimes read uh, lifelines. It's very, very important in case of emergency. You know, doors are very, very important. You need to dock the doors, close it very properly. Deck lighting has to be on. It's very, very important. You know, you need to also check cargo lashings. I've discussed earlier. 
You need to check uh, life-saving appliances and deck equipment. Like I said, I was on the ship where we lost the life raft due to heavy weather in a Cape of Good Hope. It's very important. You need to consider adding additional ballast or deballasting when you are pounding. It's very important because that affects the structures of the ship. So you also need to consider adjusting the course and uh, speed of the ship. Those are very, very important preparation. So let's look at what uh, pre sort of preparation do we require during a uh, heavy uh, weather. First of all is crew safety is paramount. Crew safety is very, very important. So it's safety of life first. So you have to consider the safety of your crew. Nobody should go on the guard. A lot of MIB report, a lot of marine and accident investigation report that have been published by MAIB and uh, nautical institutes, you know, and also company specific where crew have lost their life during heavy weather. You know, don't try and be a hero. Don't try to go forward when you have a built alarm that you want to go and check what is the cost. Yes, we know, but you have to consider your safety first. You know, we don't have to have, so, we don't want to have so many casualties. Very, very important. The second one is uh, be aware of possible damage to the forward area. You know, that's the area that has been badly, uh, you know, uh, affected by uh, water. It's very, very important. So the next one, if possible, this one is mentioned if possible rounds, but if not, please do not go on rounds if not possible. If you have, you know, like if you are on some gas carriers, they have what we call the deck passage where you can actually move from uh, the front of accommodation to forward in the, on the deck passage where you will not be exposed to heavy weather. And then most of the soundings are in the deck passage where you can take soundings safely. So safety is very important. And before uh, you do anything, you need to carry out a risk assessment, toolbox talk, in short, it is safe to do so. Uh, the next one is you need to check the deck and hatches, you know, from bridge wings, it's very important. You can use all these lamps, such light and deck lights to check everything, ensure that you don't have flood on deck, which is going to affect the stability of the vessels. Bilge alarms are very, very important, especially when you are in bulk carriers. You know, bulk carriers they sink easily. You know, the time that it takes bulk carrier to sink is very, very fast. So sometimes there's a rule in bulk carrier. I think I need to check that that uh, when you get some built alarm in bulk carrier, the first thing you do is to prepare the vessel for abandoned ship first. You know, so it's very, very important for you to uh, understand the, how critical is built alarm, especially if you're on a Bulk uh, carrier. So it's very important. There's an MGN called MGN 210. Uh, it's an, uh, and there's also an IMO safety cycler. So if you also go to uh, Nautical Institute, they have also a comprehensive uh, details about bulk carrier safety that have to do with heavy weather because uh, we have lost a lot of bulk carriers uh, as a result of heavy weather. So it's very, very uh, important. So uh, if you can copy this and check, if you're a member of Nautica Institute, you have it, you know, it's uh, very, very uh, important, you know, and also for you to check the IMO safety circular is about adverse uh, weather conditions, you know, that are extremely dangerous and master should not commit any crew member on deck unless there is no any other alternative. So it's uh, very, very important for you to check this. So uh, what are the options uh, in heavy weather? In heavy weather, first of all, you have to heave to. You know, that means you can head into the weather. Sometimes you can heave up your anchor when it's coming, it's two way. You heave it to that head into the weather. Sometimes you run before, but you can check. It's not, you are not in an aeroplane where you are making Helicopters make approximately 150 to 170, 60, 170 knots. Some aeroplane make 800 knots. That makes them to run from heavy weather. But we make sometimes average of 17, 18 knots. You know, if you're on fast ships, 21 knots. And sometimes these calls are coming 
with approximately 16 or 17 knots of speed. So you have to be very, very careful, you know, when it comes to run, you know, you have to be very careful. So HIV2, uh, the procedure is uh, you put the weather on two points to port bow. Very, very important uh, part of the preparation. You have to be on manual steering. The master have to be on the bridge. The engines have to be on standby mode, which is uh, very, very uh, important. You know, you also have to increase uh, the lookout because at that point, you might be navigating in restricted visibility. So now the rule 19 applies. So it's very, very important. You have to proceed at the safe speed. Your engines have to be on standby and immediate and ready for immediate maneuvering. You know, uh, very, very important lookout. You know, look out, you have to maintain proper lookout by sight and hearing, as well by all available means, which is very, very important. So uh, the vessel hears over advanced waves is very important. So, however, we are talking about putting the weather two points on the port bow, steering, using manual steering, but there are dangers. What are the dangers? It has to do with pitching. You have to do with rolling, slamming, pounding. So what do you do in this case? In some cases, you need to adjust trim. You know, uh, sometimes this heavy weather, they affect the engine racing. Sometimes they can increase your engine revs. Sometimes they will not. So the longitudinal stresses, heavy weather affect a lot of our ship structure, cause a lot of stresses which can damage the ship structure very, very uh, important. Shipping seas, you can be able to have a lot of seas on deck, which can affect the stability of the vessel. You know, ice accumulation, when you have a very, very low uh, temperature, you know, is very, very important. So you have to also consider uh, leeway, whether you are lead to the shore or not, which can cause grounding. So you have to be uh, very, very important. So there are different, uh, these options. We talk about uh, running before and it's the same thing we have discussed. So uh, running before, you know, is different. The other one is uh, you heave into, this one is running before. You also uh, put the weight down one to two points on a port quarter, manual steering, you know, and the dangers are, are waves are trying to overtake the ship and break over. You know, you have to be very careful of the waves traveling. Uh, ship speed might be approximately 40% less than the wave speed. Sometimes you have some waves are 26 knots and ship speed is 16. So you have to be very important. This extract, I got it from an uh, investigation report from a nautical institute. So it's very, very important for you to know the dangers of heavy seas. What are the other dangers? Other dangers have to do with uh, smaller GM free surface effect. You know, you have to understand the uh, rolling, sometimes synchronous rolling, parametric rolling. We'll discuss that one in uh, in full in our next classes. Uh, you have to talk about the prolonged hogging and sagging, which can cause uh, the ship to break. It's very, very important. So there's also an IMO circular MSC 707 you know, that talks about uh, dangers of uh, heavy weather. So you can see IMO, Nautical Institute, MRS, MCA, you know, they are quite concerned about uh, heavy weather because of the incidents that have happened in the past as a result of heavy weather. So you can see when you have been asked a question about preparation of ship, you know, for heavy weather, you can see the pass or fail question during your oral examination. So it's very, very important for you to know. It's not even for the purpose of oral examination, but in a real life scenario, you know, it's very, very important for you as officer of the watch to know that you should be able to call their master at adequate time when you are in doubt. You know, you must be able to engage hands there and call the uh, watchman, which is uh, very, very important. So uh, you can see how dangerous it is. You know, there are also in the course of heavy weather, there are actions that you take to influence uh, drift because during heavy weather, you might be drifting to another direction. There will be difficult for you to maintain your heading, course, and speed. 
So what you need to do, some of action you do is to uh, adjust your heading, you know, uh, trust us is very, very important. Uh, changing of trim, you know, if you are trimming by head and it's causing a lot of water accumulation, you have to consider trimming by stem. You know, rudder hard over to downwind position is very important. Uh, some books, uh, seamanship, it says, consider use of anchors. So it's, there's a bit of a argument here because you don't want to lose your anchors. You know, you don't want to lose your anchors. So considering using of this anchor is possibly when you are approaching port and you have uh, heavy weather, but not a deep sea. I will not strongly recommend this, but uh, if you go to Dal Dalton, that's a seamanship technique, you know, is a possible option to use. You know, you also uh, consider possibility of changing the uh, drift direction approximately 30 degrees. Uh, if you are approaching a port, you have to consider using of torques. You know, you have to consider use high power torques, just low power torques to keep you uh, heading, you know, and to help you not to drift towards the coast that might lead to uh, grounding of the vessel. So with this, we have come to the end of uh, heavy weather preparation. So uh, if you have any question, I will suggest